Hello everyone, my name is Saurabh and today we will cover administration part of SAP Data Sphere training program. Throughout the session, we will cover various administration tasks involved in managing and configuring SAP Data Sphere system. This includes security and access control, system monitoring and platform maintenance. By the end of session, you guys will be able to understand or you can say the effectively manage or maintain your SAP Data Sphere system environment. Okay, then let's go ahead with the detail agenda topic. Thanks. Okay, when we talk about the administration and authorization, we are going to cover the space management, authorization scenario, roles and setup, uh, single sign-on setup, content network, some of the best practice and what all deployment options are possible and last but not least, system monitoring. Let's talk about the space management. Uh, space is like a small data warehouse for a specific business segment or you can say it is more like an umbrella or area where you will keep all of your development artifacts. Yeah. For each business unit, you can define a own space so that they, each business department will be responsible for their data. You can share the data object from one space to another space, but it will not create a physical copy of your data. It's just a virtual sharing which you can do from one space to another space. For example, if you are modeling your master data model, then it should be created only once and then this particular space should be shared across all the business unit whichever need this master data. Now there are some basic characteristics if you want to create in create an a space then definitely you should have the administrator right. Some characteristics like uh, some of the properties who can access the space and uh, some connection related things can be uh, easily maintained with the space administration administrator right yeah what are the key benefit uh, so if if i just simplify the key benefit area then one of the major advantage it will simplify your data landscape with respect to the multiple blocks the space is one block which will be applicable for one particular business department and then that business department will be the whole sole owner of that particular data set it is it is going to enrich all of the data project then you will have the clear visibility who is responsible for what and how you can remove the data silos so you can remove the data redundancy by the sharing by sharing the information from one space to another space and minimize the development effort to in accelerate the time to value for your all development topics Let's coming to the detail uh, of the space. Then when you talk about the space management, then you will have few categories with respect to the technical definition. So overview, it is just to set up or to provide the technical name and description and what kind of storage you would like to provide, what kind of in-memory space you would like to keep. And would you like to define some kind of priorities for example, if you have a space like finance and at the same time you have a space like the test use case or the POC, then which space uh, job should have the highest priority? For example, the finance is always on top priority, then you can keep the number of parallel process or, or you can say the priority definition for your POC or the test use case space to less one and the other one keep it higher users this is more about to assigning the user with a read write access so who sh who all are the user who can access the data from this space and how uh, are they allowed to share the data or not connection is more about to set up the connection this is the key part because whenever you would like to define any data artifacts First, you would need a connection from the source data, then each space will have their own connection and whenever you define a connection that will be applicable for a particular space. Schema and access, this is more about a database instance which you can define and there you can have 
the you can utilize the power of sql or you can say that the direct database modeling we will cover that also in the next slide auditing is more about uh, the available scenarios or the things which you can perform directly to audit the space part for your data sphere let's do some hands-on so first of all log in to I already logged into my SAP data sphere instance or you can see the web page and then if you have a administrator access then you will see the page management option into the left side bar yeah once you click on the space management then you will be prompt with a window where you will you can see all the available space in the system existing and then the possibility to edit in the top side you will have an option to create then let's create a new space this is a training page 6 training batch let's go 6 then, then once you click on create then you can see all the similar menu option which we already talked while discussing the slides so overview is more about the general setting where you can define the space id space name and some of the uh, storage part for example the disk how much of, of the disk space you would like to give what kind of in-memory computing space you would like to assign and then the next part is workload management it is more about the priority as i mentioned during uh, the slide explanation so you should keep the less priority for your development space or your POC space as compared to your productive data spaces. So that in any case, if you are running any heavy workload or heavy data load, then you can easily uh, change or assign the priority for the productive task more than the POC task. Yeah workload configuration it is more about the parallel process configuration that's just if you just create a custom then you will have all the options how many threads and available and all remember this is about the user who should be allowed to access the space then you can just go and click on add you will see all the user list which you can directly click and then you will assign the the next important part is about the connection before connection let's talk about uh, the database user and the HDI container also so as I mentioned you can define uh, a instance or you can say you can define a database user let's do it so the next topic is database access it is divided into three part data consumption database user and HDI container data consumption is to more provide the data from SAP data is fair to uh, for example SAC or whoever is the consumer of your data set from SAP data sphere yeah if you are going to take expose consumption by default it will convert it will provide all the views for the consumption by default if you are not going to make it then you will have the possibility during the modeling you can can provide this properties once you define the view that expose for consumption active the next category is the database user you can create a database user to connect the external tools to SAP data sphere for example if you have some open API or you can say maybe the Python user interface where you would like to get uh, you would like to write the data to uh, SAP data sphere from the web connection then you can define your user here for example let's do it test user six test user six and then enable read access with current option enable hdi connection okay then write and then create it once you click on create it will create a database user with a schema name training batch underscore six and once you click on this row and then go to the open database explorer deploy first you need to deploy save deploy 
and then one more thing I would like to do uh, copy credential so password copy password and then I would like to open database explorer then let's continue it will open a database explorer of our SAP HANA cockpit where you will have uh, a schema for example here I can see this is the right one I can just place the password and then this is the schema which is available here you will have the possibilities to create agents column service cubes functions even you can use some graph workspaces also you can define the tables or you can you can do all the sql modeling you can write some ddl statement and all and then it is directly visible to your space whatever data set you are going to create here now let's jump back HDI the third category which is the HDI container it is more about to access the HANA development infrastructure for example if you are having a SAP data sphere and at the same time you have some HDI container we are where you have some data set you would like to connect then you can directly enable the access from your space to the HDI container yeah. let's talk about the connection but before connection one prerequisite which you need to manage that is you can create a connection only if you are you are available as a member for that particular space so I must need to add myself as a member so here we go and then save and deploy now you will have the access to define the connection if you go to the connection then click on connection part and then here you have the possibility to define all types of connection so from the SAP standard perspective you can define the data flow model import remote table and the replication flow for different feature wise connection or you can define on the basis of your source system is it a cloud or on-premise system SAP or non-SAP system for each connection you need to define the connection type also which uh, will be available uh, if you just click on here then you can see SAP S4 HANA on-premise system allows the data flow remote table and the replication flows okay then that is all about connection now let's go back to the next topic which is time and data create time dimension this is all about your physical period and date it's quite easy you will understand it once you will use it you can define it uh, then the last part is auditing audit log records read the change operation for example if you want to keep the audit of your space maybe uh, something related to the month and activity which should be monitored on a very granular level then definitely it's good idea to activate all the logs so that you can trace the things who changed what and when it was updated you will have always have the property to keep the log for some days for example seven days is the default criteria you can change it to maybe 10 days 15 days but it is not preferable to make it uh, with larger range because it will consume a lot of space that is all about the space management so our next topic is related to administration and authorization today we will cover the data access control so let's uh, talk about first uh, what is data access control so the definition is the data access control provide a row level security for SAP data sphere object yeah, why we need the row level security so let's talk about the typical scenario when you have the multiple space sales in your organization for example space marketing space finance and the space sales so if you are 
not using any data access control then all the user who are able to access the space marketing can visualize all the data whichever is residing in the marketing space in the same way if a finance guy is going to log in then he can access all the data which is uh, not realistic many times we will have the user who belongs to marketing and can access the finance data also then definitely it is needed to provide a restriction with respect to user so that they can access the respective data okay so how to set up this in data sphere in data sphere we use the concept which is a data access control through which we can define a possibility with respect to the user to filter out the data and you can say to visualize the data on the basis of the user context so that's about the data access control now if we talk about uh, more <clears throat> how we can create it so data access control for data sphere provides the row level security that is the baseline and now if we talk about detail then in data sphere you will have the two layers one is the data layer and the second one is the business layer when we talk about the data layer then it is going to hold the view and the data access control two objects so you can set up a view for a particular uh, report or you can say the data set which you want to display for the user and then at the same time you can create a physical object which is a data access control which will root the data or which will define a restriction or the access so that we can set up authorization for a particular user okay and then on top of that the business layer is residing once you hand over this view <coughs> to the business layer then they define the business entity and the authorization scenario so it is a circular method where a view consists a data access control and you can configure this data access control via authorization scenario at the end the output is the business entity which is used to visualize the data for a particular user so it, let's let's read uh, about the authorization scenario what does it mean authorization scenario in business layer define the context in which data is consumed and which data access control is applied so it is a configuration at the business layer to provide the respective access yeah and the second one is the consuming object in business layer need to leverage one of the data access control assigned to the underlying source object in the data layer so uh, I think it's not complex to understand in a simple way you can say one you will have the view which is your baseline and then you will define a data access control to set up the access rights and then in the authorization scenario you will configure those access rights on the basis is basis of user and at the end the result is the business entity which is a result object which can be used to provide to user as a data consumption interface okay now if we go to the next slide then what all all are the business uh, building blocks of the data access control and how the authorization value is driven so let's take a, a example where you have a sales view you will have the sales data from uh, the multiple department for our organization and then you want to set up a data access control for it okay so the view is static or you can say uh, a object where you will contain your transaction data or you can say the raw data at the same time you will define a table where you will have the user information and the value you can say the value which represent the sales unit yeah this table is needed this is the baseline to set up any data access control in the system and then once you combine this this is just a join in a view or you can say at the data layer so that you can define <coughs> which sales unit is pointing to uh, which user and at the in the back end it is just a select query with a filter condition which is used to visualize the data for a particular user so at the end it is just a, a simple setup with the two objects one is the body through which you can set up the data access control and then the second one is the configuration which is nothing just uh, authorization value which is completely driven by the table and in the combined way at the end you will have the entire setup to define a user uh, respective values for a particular reports or for example just uh, 
the authorization at the row level yeah then the next topic is the authorization scenario in the business builder as we as i already said uh, in the previous slide the authorization scenario belongs to the business layer it is more about the configuration of your data access control how it should work yeah so authorization scenario define which scenario is relevant to user context they can be used in consumption model to control low level data access okay the what is what are the prerequisite when you try to set up the authorization scenario in a business builder then you must need to have at least one table or view with at least one dimension created and deployed in a data layer of sap data sphere so uh, as i said you must need a view where you will have <coughs> at least one dimension which is deployed and available in data sphere and at least one analytical data set dimension or fact model created in business model and you must need a data access control data access control is the baseline so now if we talk about the complete picture then how it looks so first you will have the permission table what is the permission table so permission table is a table where you will have all the user information what what does it mean with the user the user means the user id which is used to log in into the system by the user yeah it can be either a email id or it can be any short form also which is used in data sphere and then you use this table in your views so first you will share this inside your space because this is a, a common repository where you will have all the user related information then at the same you will consume it in your space you will integrate this particular table in your view via data access control okay and then your view is ready which can be provided to the business layer yeah and on top of this at the business layer you will define the sales view you will set up the entire authorization scenario and then you can provide it to any user for example in this particular use case once you set up the sales view then you shared this with the sales space so all the user who belongs to the sales team can access this data on the basis of this permission table okay so we will talk about this uh, with a real time scenario or you can say with some hands on exercise also in next couple of minutes let's talk about the roles so i hope everyone has already gone through about the role definition in the previous version of the sap or previous system of sap uh, here also it follow the similar definition so in a simple way we can say the role is a list of tasks which user can perform in sap data sphere so for example if you want to assign a set of activities which user can perform then you can club all those activity into one task and then that task you can assign to a particular user yeah so role can be defined with a two uh, it can be separated into two part one is the standard one and another one is the custom one a standard is the template which is provided by sap and these all are the standard set of activities which is clubbed together and defined as a standard rule so for example a system owner is already existing roles which is holding a set of activity in the same way we can say the dv administrator dv space administrator and dv at integrator if you are going to check the each role then you will find the different task and the different activity which, which are like create read update delete execute maintain and share this this is maintained with a simple checkbox you can simply just check all these boxes and then user can perform those all activity the custom role is the one which user can create uh, as a for for a custom definition and how you can create it you need to follow the template so from the standard role you will copy the template either one of them or you can combine two or three of them and then you can change the individual activity on the basis of your need so that you can define the individual custom role i will go through with the detail session uh, while doing the hands on because th that will be more uh, simple way to explain this yeah let's go ahead 
So next topic is single sign-on. This is one of the crucial activity when you set up your entire system with respect to SAC, SAP Analytics, SAP Analytics Cloud, SAP Data Sphere, and any other source system box, for example, S4 HANA. You can set up the single sign-on across all the system, and then only one time you need to log in uh, for all the system access. Now, the single sign-on can be set up via uh, two ways either you can use the cloud uh, platform identity which is IDP which is SAP one and other one you you can use SEML custom identity provider this will be your any other directive where you will keep your identity related data now for the SEML configuration we always follow the typical uh, approach where we use uh, two parties one is the identity provider and the second one is the service provider so for example when a user is going to log in uh, through the web browser he will send a service request to sap data sphere with the first step and then sap data sphere will generate a saml request it will pass to the web browser and then web browser will pass that saml request to the identity provider now identity provider will check that this is uh, a login request identity provider will pass the login request to the web browser and then it will again check with the login data and credential credential to the identity provider and will pass the SAML response once SAML response will be passed through the web browser web browser will route that SAML response to the SAP data sphere and then uh, authenticated uh, service request will be generated uh, via SAP data sphere and then uh, user can perform their activity on the basis of uh, authentication data set whichever is av available so it is a, a typical process which we follow for the uh, single sign-on setup uh, maybe it will be good one we will go once we will go through with the entire hands-on exercise because this will be uh, a challenging task when you try to set up this entire activity or entire task uh, for your own infrastructure let's go ahead with the next topic so next one is the content network uh, with SAP Data Sphere, you will always have the possibility to install the existing uh, content, uh, for example, the existing data model and some set of reports which are already available. When I say the reports, it means the views and some business entities. Yeah, there is there are no direct reports available in SAP Data Sphere, but you can download all or you can import all the models. Uh, which are already existing. Uh, the importing or uh, you can say the installing of the entire um, content network uh, content is pretty simple and can be divided into four parts. Yeah, one is just to browse through the content network and then you will find out uh, the possibility with the three different nodes. One is the samples business content and third party business content samples are the one which are provided by the sap with some sample data set also the business contents are related for a particular business area line of business for example the finance hr sales but this is also provided by the sap third party is all about uh, from the individual <coughs> consulting firm or any other company who just provide the entire data model in terms of the import file <clears throat> for the user so from the end user perspective uh, it is always needed to verify all the available functions and the features which are available with the content file and then explore on the basis of need what is really needed so for example if I belongs to uh, I'm looking for a use case which is related to the sales then definitely I will go through with the business content and I will look into the folder which is sales and then uh, with the typical description and all I can easily figure it out how many tables which are used in the back end and uh, how we can model does it fit to our use case or not uh, the benefit of the content network is to deploy uh, or to uh, use the existing content and check or to implement the POC in a fastest way so that you can easily um, identify does it make sense to implement this entire scenario uh, for your own organization or it will not work in case of for example use data site and all so 
content network will we can say it cannot fulfill the entire business requirement uh, with a one to one match but definitely it will provide you the possibility to integrate your own need or the changes whatever is required and then <coughs> <coughs> provide the fastest way to go to the market um, from the steps perspective it is just to search the content first and then you will get the import option once you will check into the system and then after that once the model is imported then you need to find out what all data sources are there and how you can load the data activate uh, the data model and then uh, you can provide the views and analytical model for the consumption to SSE. The next topic in the list is the best practice of the and the deployment strategies so <clears throat> from uh, the deployment side uh, or you can say from the transport management side you will have the two possibilities one is either via single tenant or the second one is via multiple tenant when you say the single tenant then your entire implementation book or you can say the entire uh, system landscape will be divided into in three parts on the basis of a space so you will have one space for development one for quality and one for production and in that particular case you don't need to <coughs> uh, transport or export or import you can easily share also but it will be better uh, to export and import in the particular space with the different naming also so that you can keep uh, the object definition separate in, in all three environment when you talk about the multiple tenant then one tenant is applicable for dev development and the another one is for quality and the third one is will be applicable for production and then you can use always the export and import option uh, to transport your object from one system to another system from the SAP side uh, or from the SAP or you can say from the best practice side it is recommended always to have minimum two tenant where we can keep tenant one as a productive one and tenant two we can say non-productive environment or in the tenant two we can always have one part for the development and another part for quality system also and it depends on the use case to use case what kind of setup you would like to achieve but uh, from for the longer journey it is preferable to have three tenant and uh, for the <coughs> small use cases and all two tenant uh, or even one tenant also will be enough the last not least uh, last thing which we cover today that is related to the option to monitor the system we will always have the possibility to check the performance of the system what kind of the storage is available what kind of tasks are running do we have any out of memory issues or any other issue during any execution of the data flow okay so when we say the options to monitor the system then definitely there are the standard reports there are dashboard also and the log analysis which is uh, provided in terms of graph user can directly go through with the dashboard and can check uh, what kind of performance is available from the last week or even last two week also so you will always have the possibility to go into the deeper side you can check what all jobs are failed and <clears throat> how we can check uh, we can also check the memory consumption during the ex statement execution to analyze in detail so that's all from my side now let's jump to the hands-on part uh, hello everyone welcome back to the next session which is a hands-on for authorization and administration topic and today we will cover the use case related to the data access control and some part related to the roles and uh, the deployment strategies and the system performance and the monitoring okay so first is the data access control data access control as i mentioned is used to provide the role level security so for example if you want to set up a 
or row level security for a particular data set so just finance guys able to see the finance data and sales guys able to see the sales data you can set up via this you will get this option uh, with this plus sign you can click on this new data access control let's define some basic stuff here sales rep uh, we are going to create one sales representative data access control And then I already have one of the table which is PERM001 where I defined the responsible person for a particular plant on the basis of user ID that I will use uh, to check the revenue on the basis of plant. <coughs> So then uh, the another topic which is to identify identifier column which is our user ID because this column is the key criteria for example if you use any short form uh, or any <coughs> other ID which is used to log in then you will use that column here instead of this one okay then just save it and deploy save deploy so your data access control for a sales representative is available now now the next topic is to integrate this in the view I already have a view which shows the revenue on the basis of plant so if I go to the view properties here then I can see one is already added then let's let's try to check the data without any um, data access control so that you can differentiate on the basis of result so if you if I click on view data right now then I, what I can see I can see all the plants which are available and the respective revenue okay now the next thing if I add a data access control which I defined just now the sales representative then the first thing which I need to do is I need to map a particular plant which is used as a filtering criteria and then it's done save and deploy now I can see all the data uh, for the plant where I am available as a responsible person so let's visualize the data first okay so here you can see or I can see I can see the data set only for plant 1000 why only 1000 is visible so if I go to the data builder then I use one table which is PERM So if I see the data in this table, then I will see SOCH which is Saurabh Chaurasia as 1000 plant, plant 1000. Okay, that's all about uh, the data access control for a particular view which you can add. Yeah. Now the next topic is related to the authorization scenario which is again in terms of the business builder where user can define a particular set of authorization or a particular value which is provided by a data access control. You can set up a, a authorization scenario by clicking here and then you will find all the options for example our one is this sales representative and then you can click on create and then you will find uh, some basic criteria like the data restriction you need to create and here you need to define the target entity as of now I do not have any available data set which I can merge with this so I cannot showcase this part but I will cover it in my next session before going into the detail uh, let's go ahead with the role section we have already completed that during the presentation 
So if you go, if you have the DB administrator and uh, system administrator, then some of the part related to the security also will, will be visible for you. Then you will go, if you go ahead with the security, then you will have four options. One is the user roles and activity. So for example, if you go ahead with the roles, then as I mentioned, you will have always the standard user and the custom user. You can always create a new role. For example, if you create a new role, the license type is business intelligence. You will always have the possibility to choose the another one, which is a data sphere one. So it is just a separation on the basis of activity. Okay, let's go ahead with any one role. For example, the application creator then you can see what all options are available. For example, application creator can create a dimension. He can read the data from the dimension. He can update the dimension. This is the typical form which is available for all the roles. If you want to create a custom role, then you will select one <coughs> template, which is always needed. So for example, I say test underscore uh, training batch six yeah and then test license type data is fair then you will get you will be asked for a template which template you would like to follow either the db consumer db modeler so for example if i choose the db modeler then it will provide you all the tasks related to the DB modeler. And then you can define the criteria while clicking on this read, write, or change, whatever is needed. Yeah. So that's that's pretty simple, I would say. And it's it's easily self self-explanatory with respect to the previous configuration or the setup which we did in SAP system. Okay, then that's all about the roles. Uh, the another topic which we talk about the content network so let's go ahead with the next node which is a content network as I mentioned you will have the three possibility one is the sample uh, content business content and the third party content sample content is just for um, some of uh, the standard SAP FI HR and SD related stuff some very very um, sample content yes you can import all the sample content whatever is available from the standard use case perspective import option is always you just need to select from here and then you can get the description details all the stops and then you can see the overwrite import option like okay do you would like to do uh, override data or don't override it just import it as it is <clears throat> the new name also so that's all these all views will be created these this is the object repository which will be created once you import all the sample data set let's go ahead with the another part which is the business content then what you will find this is more precise on the basis of industry use case which you want to use and the last part is related to the third party content third party is about uh, from the another company uh, or another partner company who created uh, for a particular use case and you can just go through uh, with the details if it's free or not or is there any charges you can install the package and again you can uh, ask for buying option also that's all it's again pretty simple I would say the next thing which we talk about is related to system monitoring yeah, or administration if you go to the system and then administration, then we can see, uh, no, not this one, where it is, uh, configuration, no, here it is, system monitor. So, 
this is the dashboard which is used to visualize the entire system performance yeah and then again for an individual node you can check uh, what kind of performance is visible administration so for example if we talk about this from the storage perspective so you have other data 1.79 gigabyte which is a 67 percent and the data in the space which is this right now we are talking about uh, the camelot space so this view is applicable for camelot space only and then disk used by the space uh, this is a part from the entire space we are using right now 2.65 it's pretty simple and self-explanatory dashboard. The another part of uh, the system monitoring stuff is the log. So you can check uh, all the data flows which were executed and what kind of performance was there. If there is any failed data flow, then that also will be visible here. And then if you want to check in detail, then you need to select it or object name df start okay but there but there is a there is a possibility to go ahead with the detail log for a particular field statement also okay then this is about all, all this is all about uh, some of the administration and the standard features about the sap data sphere as we come to the end of administration topic i would say Thank you for choosing this program for SAP Data Sphere training. And remember one thing that SAP Data Sphere is constantly evolving platform every quarter or even for every month, you will have some new features and update which you need to explore by your own. I encourage you to continue learning and experiment with the platform to unlock the new insight. Yeah. In case if you need more detail, uh, for any topic related to SAP Data Sphere and SAP Analytics Cloud for Planning, then please follow us on our web page or you can connect with me directly. I will make sure to respond to you on time. Uh, thanks everyone.